uh, let me just pray. Father, we just thank you for this time. I thank you for this group that we have, God. And God, I pray that everything that we do today is in honor and glorifies your yes. name, Father God, and that everything we speak is truth. And that we take this home, and, and nobody in here has a perfect marriage. We just want to encourage each marriage and to, to live out the best they can, Father God. And I just pray for that today, that we take something home, that all of us in this group take something home that we can apply to our marriage, Father God. We love you. We just pray that you would just honor this time and bless this time. It's in your name we pray. Amen. 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 <clears throat> okay, so, how long? Would you rather go fishing or hunting? Fishing. One for one. Would you rather go watch an action film or a comedy? Action film. Two for two. Live without steak or live without bacon? Those are the same at our house. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. They're kind of the same. There you go. Uh, steak. Dang it! Go skydiving or bungee jump? This is. I'll that's where I was. Right, so, uh, <laughs> neither. <laughs> you know, this is only like a forty-five minute. I'd rather go skydiving. I put neither. She put neither. <laughs> huh? She, she put, put neither. neither. <laughs> yeah. That's but, a, I mean, that's just. I didn't know that was an option. Either. Live without a cell phone or TV? Oh, uh, cell phone. No, she put TV. Travel back in time or back into the future? Or back in time or like yeah, travel back in time or into the future? Um, uh, into the future. Okay. Drink Coke or Dr Pepper? Coke. Have super strength or super speed? Strength or speed. Go to Hawaii or Alaska? Alaska. Be Iron Man or Superman? Iron Man. Yep. <laughs> so how many did I miss? Two. One. Can we have neither? Because he's afraid of heights, and that's why I couldn't. <laughs> but those are both the same to me. No, like, you missed it. Yeah, but he's got to do one no, of them. Bungee jump is different because you need to wrap a cord around your neck. Yeah. Jump. Oh, oh yeah. not a skydiving. You can go with somebody. That's not horrible. That's not hanging right yourself. Right when I was young, I would have skydived, but I won't remember. Uh, figure I'll figure it out. Same. Okay. I won't do it anymore. Um, Seth, would you rather go fishing or hunting? They're the same, but probably hunting. One for one. Uh, action film or comedy film? You don't need to ask that one. <laughs> action. <laughs> uh, live without steak or live without bacon? Neither. Neither. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, if I had to pick. They told me I had to pick. Because I can wrap the steak around or the bacon around the steak. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll probably say steak just because we eat bacon more often. Oh, she circled bacon. Okay. Uh, would you rather go skydiving or bungee jumping? Both. One. <laughs> Scott Evan. Three for four. Live without a cell phone or a TV? TV. Oh, she said cell phone. Would you rather travel back in time or travel into the future? Both. Oh my goodness, he's difficult. <laughs> he is difficult. That's why y'all. You can watch like, TV on your questions. cell phone. Y'all didn't think about that. That's what I You can watch TV going. on your cell phone. Yeah. That's why I chose. That's why I said live without TV. <laughs> Yeah, but that was my then you have to answer your past. Oh, so past. Huh? He said he'd oh, past. Okay. Get it. Um, I thought he said past, mm. like go on. I was like, no. no. Drink past. Coke or Dr. Pepper? Nope. Dr. Pepper? No, Dr. Pepper. <laughs> Would you rather have super strength or super speed? He's already got the speed. <laughs> that's what, well, that's what I said. that's what I said, but then I was like, no, maybe it's speed. I don't know. I can decide. Speed. I should have said or. <laughs> Can I circle or on all these? Can go to Hawaii or Alaska? Alaska. Oh, Hawaii. Where do you want to go? I want to go to Alaska. <laughs> <laughs> I want to go to both. Alaska. I want to go to Alaska. I want to go to Alaska. So. Would you want to be Iron Man or Superman? Iron Man. Oh my goodness, oh no. What? One, two, three, four. Five. I was like, Melissa, I didn't know. Five for ten. Y'all are still in the league. Hey, okay. okay. She just doesn't know that one because she doesn't watch those type of things. Exactly. Hey, Mary right. and Marcel. Yeah. Marcel. I know Superman, but I don't know enough about okay. Iron Man. It's Marcel's turn. Yeah. So Marcel, would you rather go fishing or hunting? Fishing. Oh, yep. Yeah. Um, watch an action film or comedy film? Action. Two for two. Uh-oh. They're probably going to get it. Live without steak or live without bacon? Live without bacon. How about steak? <laughs> Um, would you rather go skydiving or bungee jumping? Skydiving. Wow, y'all are four uh -oh. for four. <laughs> would you rather live without a cell phone or a TV? I'd rather live without a TV. Did I get it? Yeah, five All for right. five. Um, would y'all? Would you rather travel back in time or travel into the future? Future. Yep. 
Ooh, y'all not Tyler and Angie and Becky. Would you rather drink Coke or Dr. Pepper? Neither. Hey, she got it. She put won't drink soda. Wow. wow. <laughs> Impressive. Would you rather have super strength or super speed? Speed. Yep. <laughs> eight for eight. Speed Go kids. to Hawaii or Alaska. Wow, this is the one that's this difficult. Is hard. Yeah, that is hard. Been to Hawaii, so I'd say Alaska. Yep. And last one, be Iron Man or Superman? Superman. Ten for ten. Whoa! Whoa. Awesome. I can't get them either, but not well, as well. The superheroes. <laughs> <laughs> Why didn't my neither count? Yeah. That's yeah. what I want to know. Exactly. <laughs> either way, it wouldn't matter. Uh, you got five rides. Andy, did y'all each get a ticket last week? Yeah, but all of mine. Oh, she I think it was mine. I think it was mine. Because she's sorry. Good job. 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 Put your name on it and like, put it yeah. in. I know. I wish we could have like sent Andrew a text and have him like. I know. And then Becky. Yeah. I know. We, well, and it's hard because when we were trying to come up with games, it's like it's hard to know. Too. Okay. Um, and this is just a handout with what we're doing today. If y'all like to take notes, I don't know. Some people do. Some people don't. I do. I don't know. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah. You're welcome. There's the notes. Oh, I thought that was mine. So last week we kind of talked about this kind of review. We talked about the purpose of a marriage, and, and we talked about if uh, we don't know the purpose of something, we end up misusing it. We kind of gave examples of of instructions, guys. When we get instructions, what's the first thing we usually do? We usually go my little out. But, you know, the Bible is really an instruction manual for our marriages, really. And yeah. then women, we talked about cookbooks, and if you don't put certain ingredients in, you miss the... My the, wife's the worst at that. She takes one ingredient well, out. Well, if it's not important. I mean, like... <laughs> She'll always come back. Do you think it really needs eggs, Jamie? No, I do not. <laughs> eggs. I no, know. You're making an omelet. No. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do baking something important. Stuff. Oh, the things that Jess and I came up with, the, the things that our marriage are supposed to do, supposed to reflect God, it's supposed to be a mirror image of God in our marriage. As couples, we're supposed to reflect Him in everything He does and reproduce. The Bible is very good, uh, very clear about reproducing, raising godly children, leaving a legacy. You know, I think that's. I think about the risk game. If you, if you y'all played risk. Love. And yeah. it's kind of like that when we raise up godly mm -hmm. children, we're trying to take more territory. I think that's how I look at it. When we when we when we're following God and we and we're putting it into our kids, when our kids go out to colleges where they when they get their own family, they start raising their own own kids. We're taking more and more territory from the enemy. Generation, that's how I look generation. at it. Sure. And then we're supposed to reign. Uh, the Bible's very clear about we're supposed to to go out and take domain over the land. And that's kind of where we have to put into our kids. And then the second thing that we thought about when we in our marriage is uh, other things like companionship, enjoyment, all that. But that comes second, I think, to everything else that God has put in front. Correct? Is that what you? Mm -hmm. We started in Genesis and talked about Adam and Eve and um, just the beginning and stuff. And this week, um, and if you weren't here last week, we talked about too how you know God put this on our heart probably a year or two, a year to two years ago, and we, um, you know, we we didn't really know when the opportunity would present itself. Well, then whenever we knew that Jason and Nina were going to have a baby, we thought, well, you know what? I told Jamie, this might be the time we're supposed to start this marriage um, thing. So we're, you know, we just want to, our motto is encouraging couples to be the best couple they can be, including ourselves. Because, I mean, we've been married 19 years, and I know some of y'all have been married longer than we have. And believe me, we're not experts, but we're here to just encourage couples and hopefully all of us can learn something from this. But um, this week, we're going to talk about priorities for a purposeful marriage. Um, you know, last week we talked about the purpose of a marriage, and this week we want to break it down into the priorities that come from the Bible. So, you want to ask the question a little <clears throat> So, the question we came up with was, what do you value? Tom, what is something, you know, besides your family and friends, and what is something that you value? No. It could be anything. It could be Football, basketball, uh, whatever, golf clubs, cornhole boards, whatever. <laughs> uh, my backyard. 
But how how would we tell that you value your backyard? How? Yes. Because I like to clean, neat, and a barbecue pit. You're gonna put effort into it, right, to make sure it's yeah. it's nice and neat and clean. Yeah. What about you, Marcel? Are we talking about like a physical thing? Anything? Anything? Yeah. I value my word. Your word? Yeah. If okay. I say I'm gonna do something, or if somebody says, "Did he say that?" Yeah. If it lines up with what I believe in. That's awesome. what I value. How about you, Seth? Shotgun too, so. <laughs> I don't know. Both those are good ones. They don't have to be really deep. TikTok. Family, not family. Uh, that's that's yeah. Well, I think that's the easiest thing for us to do is say, okay, family, we value our family. <laughs> we'll get kind of into that here in a second, but. I think, okay, I think Lynn and I would say maybe sports, but more from the lessons they can teach us okay. and what you can teach others to. And how do we know that you you like those things? Because you're going to invest a lot of time right. into it. You're going to invest time into it. it. You're going to invest money into it. Mine was golf clubs. That's the example I came up with. Now I haven't used them in two years, but that's the thing. How, how would you know if I value my golf clubs? I'm going to use them. I'm going to run the course. I'm going to spend money. I'm going to put time, effort, I'm going to clean them, make sure they, they look good and everything. And I believe that's the same thing with God is wanting us to do in our marriages. If we if we say things in our marriages that, that, that we value, what you invest in, whatever, what's, you, value. whatever you value, you invest in. Would you all agree with that? Yes. And that includes our word with God, our time with God, our time with our family, our time with our kids and other things, right? So that's something that we had to learn in marriage at first. I mean, I don't know about, if y'all know our whole story, we almost were divorced about three times. And that's kind of why I think marriage has been put on our hearts is because we, we've learned a lot, and I know that we want to be able to encourage other couples. So. When, like, last week I was talking about how I was so into the wedding day as a woman, you know, just, oh, I can't wait to get all this ready for the wedding day as not looking for the future towards the future of after you get married there's a there's a marriage you know i think mm -hmm. you go into it which we were young i was 20 he was barely 21 i think mm -hmm. and but anyway you know you go into it we're both in college you think okay it's going to be all butterflies and bliss you don't realize the uh after the ceremony after the marriage and i mean our marriage started out good but it was hard it started out good but we invested in it in each other and invested in it but as time went on you know, we kind of lost sight. And that's kind of what we're going to talk about today, just how you can easily lose sight of priorities, but whenever you have your priorities right, how good it can be. And so uh, women, I, I was kind of thinking of, Jamie was asking me on what you value, and it is hard because we all, I mean, family, kids, I mean, so I was just thinking, well, like materialistic, what are you thinking? Because I don't really value anything above, you know what I mean, above God and family and kids. But, I mean, as women, I was like, well, I mean, I like taking care of my wedding ring. I like taking care of, I mean, we like having nice clothes, you know, things like that. We're not going to go out in, like, a nice dress and go, I don't know, jump in the mud and this and that, you know. <laughs> so, and anyway, I just, for y'all, I know the guys did it, but, like, what do y'all, what do you value, Mel? Um, my health, I guess. As I just ate a donut. <laughs> well, that's okay. <laughs> I put the work in so I could eat the donut, though. That's the thing. And it was worth it. Right? It was worth it. <laughs> yeah. And so how do you invest in your health? Um, eating right. I think just, like, as a person that has health issues, like heart problems and stuff, it's very important to me to well, maintain that. So I... Eat right and take care of your body. Yeah, exactly. What about you, Mary? Um, I think I probably my home. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, outside of family, but That's just right. value taking care of my home. That's a good one. Yeah, I think as women, a lot of us do that because. That's what I was torn yeah. against. It was yeah. my home and and that. Yeah, because yeah. you want it to be 
clean and peaceful mm -hmm. and well taken right. care of. And I think that's a woman's heart. Yeah, yes. that's really good. And how do you do it? I mean, how do you invest in making sure that it look or is like it should be? I just know that there's things I have to do every day, and if I don't, then it's just trashed like in five hours <laughs> or minutes I just know like, every day like that I'm going to have to set aside time to do this or you know do this thing before I do something right. else so. that's why you can't bring somebody else home unless you passed it by <laughs> <laughs> is it okay to bring somebody <laughs> so Dr. Lesson you might have learned right? <laughs> well what about you Melissa I would probably say my classroom and the kids at school. Yeah. I put a lot of value in them um, and a lot of time and a lot of effort. But then it, I was close with the house because I like to walk into <clears throat> something that's, you know what I mean? Like, not chaos. Or inviting. Yeah. Well, well and orderly, orderly. Orderly. Yeah. Yeah. things yeah. are put at least most of it to the, to the blind eye. If you walk in, you wouldn't see my mail stacked over there. But I mean, my couch is clean. My, I can't stand a dirty living room. It does. Mm -mm. no. <laughs> I agree. If you leave your socks in the living room, you're liable to die. <laughs> <laughs> so in your classroom, how do you make sure that you invest in, like, what do you do to make sure? I just like Thousands every, of dollars. <laughs> <laughs> I like to buy, I, I do like to buy stuff for my kids. I like it to be inviting. I like them to have, you know, everything they need to learn. And I just, I don't know. That's one of the things I like. I invest a lot of time and effort into. But then it also, I mean, it shows through y'all's relationships too. I mean, which same with the home. If you have a peaceful, nice home, you know, it shows your kids. To me, if it's chaos and the mom's chaotic, then it kind of is, you know. So women as women, I think God put that in our hearts to want the peace and the harmony, and we're kind of the peaceful role in the home. What about you, Nancy? <coughs> what do you value? It would definitely be my home, but I think. <laughs> My kids eat a ton. <laughs> I bet they love it. Three boys. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. All right. They, we stayed at a hotel last weekend for my birthday, and they didn't have like a hot breakfast. They just had like yogurt and granola bars. And my kids came home like, Mama, we want your breakfast. Aww. Yeah, Aww. It. That's so <laughs> well, and it goes with, I mean, whatever you value, you do invest in it. And so if you're, you know, valuing cooking or value and keeping your house clean, then you invest in that. Just same with the marriage. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, the first priority we're going to talk about is, of course, um, God. God comes first in our marriage. So y'all want to turn to Deuteronomy 6. Deuteronomy 6, 5, five through six, 6 is where I think the Bible is very clear that our number one goal for even not even being married, it's it's God. God has to be our first priority. And Deuteronomy uh, 6, 5 through 6 says, it's Love the Lord your God with all your heart with all your soul and with all your strength. I mean, I think that's that's something in my life that I had to learn. I think marriage, is, for me, it was kind of a fairy tale. I didn't know what to ex expect. And to me, when I got married, it was like, okay, you got married. But I didn't realize that until later on in life that, man, there's a, there's a, there's a real purpose for our marriage. There's a real purpose for why God put us together. And, and we've all done our purpose in here. I think most of us have, and you, it even starts to kind of come together even more once you figure out what your purpose is and what your name means and all that. So, <clears throat> for me, this wasn't priority number one for me, for me in my life when we first got married, and it was probably it wasn't even the second or third. It was probably way down the list. I knew God. I was a Christian, but I definitely didn't prioritize him. I, I wasn't my top investment in my life wasn't him. I wasn't putting time in reading the word. I wasn't really being the husband to my wife that I should have been. So, you want to add anything to that? I mean, we both, you know, I was raised in a wonderful Christian home, and we both kind of, when we got married, we lived in Canyon, and we would go, we'd always gone to little churches. So we went to Grace Baptist in Canyon, and it was a great church, but we wouldn't consistently go, and so we kind of fell out of going to church, fell out, you know, and so it was... Um, I don't feel like we did put God first. And then we moved to groom, and there were a lot of times I would go to church and say, hey, Jamie, let's go. And when the kids were little and he wouldn't go, and we fell into, it was just a struggle for us to um, put God first, and Satan knew exactly how to attack that. 
and not saying we just had to go to church. I mean, there were other areas in our life that we weren't we weren't praying together. We weren't, you know, in God's word. Um, and so you could tell for sure that our priorities. That's when we started having issues when we didn't have God first in our marriage and um, everything. But I like what six says. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. That goes along with it because how important it is that I mean to put it on our hearts he wants us to have it that close to us and um, love with all your soul all your strength all your heart to love God and to me you know there's times that like I said at the beginning of our marriage we started out good but I don't think we put God first uh, we pursued I mean yeah I think for, for the first year maybe we were both I, was, I was saved when I was 21 years old and I was kind of I was starting to follow God pretty hard for maybe two months I think that's what I did, and then after that, the world kind of sucked me back into the the norm of the, of the world. So, yeah, in our marriage, it wasn't. I don't know. We, we got married, and then it was just kind of a. I don't know. I don't know if I really valued what marriage really meant at the time we got married. So, um, one of the sorry, oh God, go ahead. One of the key things of keeping God first. If you look down at verse twelve, it says, "Be careful that you not forget." the Lord who brought you out of Egypt and out of the land of slavery. When you remember where you were before God, and then who you are because of God, it just helps to bring uh, a newness of, of the way that he is and who he is to you. And just something to really help uh, anchor you down is how good he is brings priority back into your life. So. I think it's so easy to forget that, mm-hmm. you know, I think a lot of times, even nowadays, we, well, I'd love to say that this is perfectly in our life now, but it's 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 a struggle. But it's easy to forget sometimes. The closer you get to God and the closer as a couple, Satan's going to attack you because he knows that you're you're going towards God and he doesn't want you as a couple to go towards God because then, oh, that's going to go to your kids. The kids are going to go, y'all are going to take this out into the world. You know what I mean? It's more, power. yeah, it's, it's power. power. Like we talked about last week, there's yeah. power between the couples. And um, so... With this verse, Deuteronomy 6, 5 through 6, what do y'all think it looks like to love the Lord with all your heart, soul, and strength? I know the Bible says, if, I mean, Jesus said, if you love me, you'll obey me. And here in Deuteronomy, it's talking about keeping the Lord's commandments. And it's about walking in obedience every day with the Lord. And those things will carry over in your marriage. I mean, it's, it's all encompassing. So if you're walking in obedience to the Lord, it's going to bless your marriage. It's going to bless your children. So I really think it's just about keeping the Lord's commandments. Well, and the scripture that's been on my mind all week is do not be hearers, be doers. And so that goes along with the same thing. It's just, you know, we have to, like you said, be obedient and um, not just hear it, but do it in every aspect of our life. That's good. I think anything you, it's a priority you spend time with. Mm-hmm. And so if you're in the God's word and you're praying, then it, it's a priority. It's, you've made it a priority. If you're not, then it's just second. So it's got to be a priority. Even when you're cleaning your house. Or yeah, when you're in exactly. Or I mean, you, washing a golf club. Paul said, I pray whatever. daily, yeah. Yeah. hourly almost, you know. Exactly. So. Yeah. so I think that's, you know, it's easy to say, oh, probably number one for me is God. But as Jessica said, James 1, 21, 22 says, don't just be do- the hearers of what be doers. And how often is our how often is our relationship with God just a lip service sometimes? We just say, yeah, he's number one in our life, but we spend five minutes a day with him in a devotional or something, or we don't even pray, we don't even get his word some days. And I think that's, for me, that's what changed our marriage the most, is finding God, surrounding ourselves with people that, we're going to push us toward God and and praying on a daily basis. I think that's where that's where our marriage really started to change. So, anything else you want to add? If, go ahead. No. I think I think one of the things too, um, and I've struggled with this through the years. Um, spending time with church isn't the same as spending time with God, with God or preparing for. And I, I find I struggle more when I'm trying to prepare youth lessons and things like that and getting ready for that stuff and I 
find I spend less time with my quiet time and other things mm -hmm. like that than I should. But, um, and that's one of those things that sometimes the good, even the good things can take away from your party. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Well, loving the Lord with all your heart, your mind, your soul, that's every fiber of your being. So everything you do should be an overflow of who your master is. And if your master is the Lord, it'll show in the life. Mm -hmm. And and so, you know, whenever I teach, sometimes the discipline part and the, the love part, you're like, I have to discipline so that they're on the right path. But sometimes kids don't take it as discipline, they take it as he doesn't like right. me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if you have that relationship with them over time, then they see he does this because he cares about us. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, if you balance it out correctly, everything will flow and, and people will see the overflow and over time they see the whole the big picture of your life. So yeah. you know, living for the Lord with everything you have is what uh, draws people into that. I think Amy had a great illustration of that in a sermon about compartmentalizing. Compartmentalizing. Yes, about our faith. You know, mm -hmm. sometimes we take him to school, sometimes we don't. Uh, sometimes we take him to our marriage or we don't. And you know, I think that's sometimes you know what we do with our faith sometimes. And but when you said it exactly right, when we live it out, everything we have, then it flows down to everything we have. So well, I'm like a reflection of you. You guys think of a mirror. You know, if you're looking in that, I mean. We're supposed to be a reflection of Jesus in all we do, and I mean, it's hard sometimes. Yes. You know, you you get in situations or this and that, or like you said, disciplining. There's teachers in here. We know sometimes it's like, oh my goodness, but <laughs> it's like, okay, God, give me peace and control. So before I speak, you know that I can, and I just think it's being aware and conscientious before you, you know, react. But that's really good. Um, we so priority one, God. We better move on because we're kind of behind. And um, priority two, we put spouse because after God, your spouse comes next. Um, and we're going to be with that in Ephesians 5, 22 through 25, right? Let me get there. I'm not there. So we'll be in Genesis 2, 24 as well with this one. Okay. I should have been ready. Can we read it? Go ahead. Yeah, you can. <laughs> Wives, be subject to your own husbands as to the Lord, for the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ also is head of the church, he himself being the Savior of the body. But as the church is subject to Christ, so also the wives ought to be to their husbands in everything. And then 25. 25. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ also loved the church. He gave him up, himself up for her. Um, I know all of us have heard those scriptures and um, I, I figure most of us probably have but and I know sometimes people say you mean we have to submit to our husbands as wives you know and they take it out of context but you know to me it's a um, respect our, my husband's you know he's the head of our house and um, when we first got married and I know I shared this with Mel and Tom last week and Andy and Becky but I, I remember I was very independent and I, um, I mean, the day after I graduated, I moved out from my house and left and wanted to be out. And, you know, I was just very independent. And um, when we got married, you know, I thought, wow, you mean I have to tell Jamie that I'm going to go to the store or go do this or that? And, you know, I didn't want to, I don't feel like really I wasn't submitting because I thought, I don't want to have to tell him that I, I mean, every little thing, come on, you know, it, it bothered me. But now, I mean, out of respect, you know, I need to tell him where I'm going. I like him to tell me where he's going. But that part was hard, and um, I just feel like that, to me, is what hit me on that scripture. of like, yeah, I wasn't really submitting to my husband because I wanted to do my thing and my own mm -hmm. selfish desires instead of thinking about what he needs and what he might need to hear and be respectful of his needs. So um, that's what I got from the last part. <clears throat> I think in the corporate world, even somebody's got to be in charge. Right. If you if you have a football team, who calls the plays? The quarterback. He's in charge. He he's not the. You know he's over the team, but he's not the team. Uh, the or the coach.